OpenAI dropped GPT-5 with massive fanfare, claiming that it's PhD level expert in anything. But here's the kicker. And I've been waiting to make this video because I didn't want to give you my first impression. I wanted to really let things settle in and give you a very full review. But here's the point. It can't even solve basic second grade math. So when given the simple equations of 5.9 equals X plus 5.11, GPT-5 confidently spat out X equals negative 0.21. Now any elementary school kid knows that that's wrong. So if this is supposed to be our PhD level expert, why are 3000 users already petitioning to get the old models back? Why is OpenAI scrambling to control the narrative when their flagship release is getting roasted across the internet? So today I'm gonna to break down some reasons why GPT-5 isn't the revolutionary leap OpenAI promised and why this might be the beginning of the end for their dominance. Now let's dive into this today. All right, guys, the AI world was supposed to be celebrating right now. And so instead of watching one of the biggest tech disappointments of 2025 unfold in real time. So remember when I called out the things in the past before when the bubble crashed and burned? Well, those same warning signs are flashing bright red for OpenAI's latest breakthrough models. So Sam Altman made this big, huge announcement hyping up the release of ChatGPT5. And frankly, he had just released GPT OSS and they should have just left it at that because that's actually pretty good. And I'm gonna give you guys a review on that here really soon because I actually like their open source model and I'm a big fan of them releasing open source but instead he goes and makes this huge claim with all these kind of uh, big like oh it's coming right like the Death Star is coming because we're going to be amazing AGI he could have just left well enough alone and been like hey we're gonna get this latest release but like Sam like made this really stupid decision here and he couldn't have possibly been more off the mark and this did not age well and I think you can look this up and find that it's like Swiss cheese and it's like all these other things like there's <laughs> there's been a a ton of people roasting this and for good reason because OpenAI marketed GPT-5 as a legitimate PhD level expert in anything yet it spectacularly fails at tasks that any second grader can handle now as a lot of people said it's amazingly brilliant and let amazingly stupid so let's give you an example here now if you want somebody who's definitely going to roast people you can go follow Gary Marcus he gives you a lot of good stuff and he particularly like me does not care for chat GPT Sam Altman or OpenAI so so he's in good company with me here. But so somebody came, so Gary Kerr came to say, say solve 5.9 equals X plus 5.1. And this, you know, five, subtract 5.1 from both sides and you get X equals negative 20, you know, negative 0.21. Obviously, clearly this is wrong, right? And, uh, you know, so like this is this is definitely, definitely wrong. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of different edge cases like this that are hitting this. Now, this isn't a kind of an edge case, right? This also is not some complex math problem, right? This is something that should be basic arithmetic that's taught in school. But it really highlights how these uh, LLM models work, right? This is the same model that OpenAI claims will revolutionize healthcare, education, and scientific research. So so the fact that this PhD level AI can't handle simple subtraction raises some pretty serious questions. Now what I can't figure out why they haven't done is why they aren't forcing this off and says, hey, this is math. We should send this into one of the big math algorithms, right? Because there's a lot of online math systems, right? So I'm curious to see why it is that uh, you know that these are happening all over the place, right? Because we're seeing them over and over again, and we're you know, and and even as Gary Marcus is roasting me, he says, "Can you feel the AGI?" And of course, tag Sam Altman. Now, within just days of GPT 5s release, uh, you know, tens of thousands of users have signed a petition demanding OpenAI bring back the previous models. See, the thing about it was there was a dominant reaction on Reddit and Twitter that there was not a excitement. It was major disappointment and frustration. Users report that GPT-5 actually felt like a downgrade from GPT-4.0 in many real world scenarios. OpenAI's own subreddit, typically a fan club for their releases, became flooded with complaints and criticisms. The company had to quietly restore access to the older models because the backlash was so intense. So this level of user result, revolt is pretty unprecedented for OpenAI. They've actually had a pretty strong fan base, right? Kind of like the early fan, Apple people jumped off the Apple bandwagon and jumped on to uh, OpenAI's wagon, right? So despite OpenAI's claims of improvement, GPT-5 still makes incorrect claims 9.6% of the time. Now, you think that I'm making this up, but this is actually their own data. Let me get this up here. So you can actually see that according to their own data here, 
factuality on GPT production, and they're saying the percentage of incorrect claims, they're saying, yay, it went down 3%. Okay, so you're still saying that 10% of the time, this is actually incorrect, right? So, but they're just heralding that uh, that they think. Now it does go down and they're saying that it goes down, and this is their own numbers, but they're saying it goes down to 4.5% when you add thinking. I, I have a different take on this, um, but if you look actually number of collect correct cl claims per response, you can see it's pretty much still on par. So honestly, where they're saying that these are a lot, of, like they're bragging that these are better claims, I don't know that I'd be bragging that one out of 10 things that it says are inaccurate. To me, anything that gives, gives you one out of 10 bad answers, would I would never trust in a production system. Hey, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As your fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com Spencer.